Welcome to another tutor short provided by the Educational Support Services Department of Lehigh Carbon Community College in Snexville, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Allentown. These videos review key learnings for the science courses provided here at LTRIC. And please remember that the Educational Support Services Department does provide walk in tutoring five days a week. Okay, today's video, we're going to start with an introduction into carbohydrates. Um, the, for our um, Chem 106 course, which is our introductory chemistry course for nurses, um, we're going to need to break this into three different videos. Uh, this will be the first one where we're going to focus on the monosaccharides. But as, as a start, carbohydrates are the most abundant organic compounds in nature and are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And um, the simple sugars, which has a formula I show here, um, carbon and can be written in this form with carbon and water, sort of, is where they came up with the name hydrates of carbon or carbohydrates. So that's where the name carbohydrates came in. However, um, also um, the Greek word for sugars, saccharides, um, are the uh, more common name they use for um, these carbohydrates because they are our sugars involved in our biological processes. So when you get to types of carbohydrates, um, they're identified here as monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides, the different uh, forms of sugars. And the, the monosaccharides are the simplest carbohydrates and they, uh, they cannot be split or hydrolyzed into smaller carbohydrates, uh, hence the term mono, meaning one. Um, they cannot be broken into two or more uh, other carbohydrates. A disaccharide, uh, we'll do a separate video on di and polysaccharides, but a disaccharide consists of two monosaccharides joined together, and a polysaccharide is a polymer. We have many monosaccharide units uh, joined together. So we'll deal with those two, the diapolis, uh, on another video. And we'll also do a video on chirality, which is what, uh, it's an important property of carbohydrates. And that's where a mirror image of an organic molecule cannot be completely matched. Uh, they are said to be, therefore, super, non-superimposable or chiral. An example of that is a pair of gloves or shoes. They kind of look the same, but you can't superimpose one on the other since one's a left-hand and the other's a right-handed. And um, for our compounds here in carbohydrates, when a carbon atom is bonded to four different atoms or groups, then the compound is said to be chiral because of that carbon. So this is a called a concept map for carbohydrates. We basically have um, carbohydrates broken up to, as I mentioned, mono, di, and polysaccharides. And the mo mono and di are the simple sugars, and uh, complex sugars are the polysaccharides. And uh, for the monosaccharides, the three that are important in our Chem 106 course are glucose, fructose, and galactose. Those are the common uh, monosaccharides. And um, there are others, uh, but these are the ones that are focused on in our course. And we'll teach a little bit uh, in this video what we mean by aldose and ketose, so that'll come up on another slide. Uh, the disaccharides that are important in this cor course, maltose, lactose, and sucrose. And uh, uh, a unique thing about mal maltose and lactose are those are the reducing sugars. And again, we'll deal with that in uh, the other video. And then polysaccharides, they're represented by the groups of um, starches, fibers, and glycogen. So that's a concept map for uh, generally for carbohydrates. So now let's focus on the monosaccharides. These are the three that we deal with in this course, uh, glucose, galactose, and fructose. I show them here as their uh, what's called Fisher projections. Um, this is a linear representation of a normally cyclic monosaccharide. So they're normally in a, a cyclic structure, um, but they're much easier to draw as a linear representation as shown here. And so that's how commonly uh, people deal with these compounds. 
uh, in this type of format. Uh, what you'll uh, notice here, I try to identify with colors how you identify between glucose, galactose, and fructose. You'll see they're all six carbon um, structures. I've numbered them in red and green here, the one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, those are the six carbons in, the, in these structures. So the, all three of them have six carbons. The Between glucose and galactose, you'll notice that what I highlighted in blue here, these are the same. Uh, so the beginning of the chain, the carbon one, is an aldehyde group. Um, but what is different is down here on the fourth carbon, the H and the OH have switched places. So that's how, uh, so otherwise, uh, these two compounds are the same. The only difference is on this number four carbon. So that's how you can identify whether you have glucose or galactose. When we then looked at the other important sugar that we'll deal with, fructose, the difference there is with this um, C double bonded O, the carbonyl group. On gl glucose and galactose, they're on the top here, the beginning of the molecule. However, in fructose, it's on the second carbon is where the double bonded O is. So that's how you can identify when you have fructose is by where that carbonyl group is. So those are the three, um, three simple sugars we're going to deal with as monosaccharides. Um, the other thing that's introduced in this, uh, in this course um, are the terms aldose and ketose, which we have right down here. And they relate to this blue structure on the top. When the carbonyl is on the end of a, uh, or the top or the end of a carbon structure, that's an aldehyde group. And so therefore, this structure of glucose here can be called an aldose because it starts with an aldehyde. And they even go further because this is six carbons. You can further define this as an aldohextose. So an aldehyde with a six carbon uh, structure. So an aldohexose. Over here with fructose, the carbonyl is on the second carbon. When you have uh, an, an embedded carbonyl that's not on the end of a molecule, then that's called a ketone. And we've learned that in earlier chapters um, in this course. So you have fructose as a ketone structure. So you could call it a ketose. And again, because you have six carbons in this particular case, fructose can be called a ketohexose. So those are other terms that you'll uh, need to become familiar with. Another identification uh, for monosaccharides is whether you have a D or L isomer of, um, of that uh, monosaccharide. So I, I used here the um, sugar glucose to show the difference between a D glucose and an L glucose. And to identify whether you have D or L, you're going to be looking what you're going to look in is where the star is, where the OH group is on the star. Now it's defined, um, the, the way you define it is the position of the OH group, which is the one with the star. Um, you look for that OH group that is attached to the chiral carbon farthest from the carbonyl group. So the carbonyl group is up here to see double bonded O. And if you remember, I said earlier, the chiral carbon is a carbon that has four different groups or atoms attached to it. And this, is the f this carbon number five is the farthest carbon away from the carbonyl that has four different things attached to it. Let me clear this up a little bit and show you. The OH is different than the H, which is different than the CH2OH which is different than this whole structure. So the carbon here, number five, has four different groups attached to it. And it's the last one because if you look at um, the final carbon here, the CH2OH, this carbon has two hydrogens to it. 
So it doesn't have four different things attached to it because two of them are hydrogens. So carbon number five is your farthest carbon. And you'll see that's going to be true with uh, the three different uh, sugars that we deal with, the glucose, galactose, and fructose. It's always going to be carbon number five is going to determine whether you're D or L. If the OH is on the right, you have D. And if it's on the left, you have L. Now, actually, D and L, this L does not actually represent the word left. It just happens to coincide with the word left. But they have other meanings in Greek and um, other reasons why they're identified as D or L, which you don't need to know about. But um, just remember that if the OH in your sugar is on the right, on this fifth carbon, you have a D form of uh, that sugar, and L is if it's on the left. Now, the last thing uh, to go to is I mentioned before that the Fisher represent, uh, projections is the linear projection of a normally cyclic um, monosaccharides. So the other way to show these is in its cyclic structure. That's called the Hayworth structure. You're showing it as a ring. So uh, monosaccharides are most stable in this ring structure. And those structures are called the Hayward structures. You still have the DNL representation can be uh, applied in this structure. And I'll tell you in a second um, how you identify that. We also introduced, though, another term, whether you have an alpha or beta representation of those sugars. And I'll show you also in this slide how those are determined. So let's look, first look at DNL. So here we have glucose. Um, actually, I show all three here. Let's, let's look at this first. Let's look at how we know we have glucose, galactose, and fructose. Uh, if we start at fructose, fructose is very easy. Because that carbonyl group is internal, you end up with a cyclic structure that has five sides. So it's very quick and easy to say you have fructose because you have a penta. Uh, pentagon here, a five-sided structure. The glucose and the galactose, however, you have the six-sided structures. So they're similar uh, in that regard. So then the next thing you need to know, be able to tell between glucose and galactose, you're going to look at this carbon here on the end here, this carbon. If the OH is down, you have glucose. The OH is orientated up, you have galactose. So the first thing to look at in the six ring structure is go over here. This is the ends up being the fourth carbon. Uh, carbons are numbered one, two, three, and four. The fourth carbon, if the OH is up, you have galactose. If it's down, you have glucose. Now let me clean up and we can go look at the other designations. So that's how you tell between the three different sugars there. The next thing is the D and L representation. So to look for whether you have a D or L glucose, you're going to look at the terminal CH2OH in blue here. So you're going to look at this, the way it's drawn in the structure. And if it's orientated up, um, if it's above the ring, up, then you have a D glucose. Um, I should have probably drawn one here, but let me draw a simple structure here. This is where your oxygen would be. If on this carbon here, the CH2OH was down, the H up, then this would have been an L glucose. So you look at the CH2OH see whether it's up or down. And in all three of these, the CH2OH is up. And so all of these are the D forms of glucose, galactose, and fructose. So that's how you tell L or D. And then if you're given this structure and you want to know whether you have alpha or beta uh, representation, that is based on, in the six ring structure, it's based on the number one carbon and on the five-wing structure number two. So 
on here's glucose. We're going to look at glucose. You look at the number one uh, carbon. The OH is down in this case. If it's down, it's alpha. The OH was up here and the H down, then this would have been the beta. So you just look there. Um, this also is a six ring structure for galactose. The OH is in the down position, so this is alpha. If it was up, it would have been a beta. On fructose, this is actually the second carbon because the first carbon is up here. But you look at the carbon that's right here on the corner. And again, if the OH is down, it's alpha. And if, it's, if it was up and the CH2OH was down below, it would have been beta. So that's how you look at alpha and beta on those. The, um, the only other thing that is occasionally done in this course, uh, some teachers uh, would like you to learn how to convert from the linear Fisher projection down to the cyclical uh, projection, the Hayworth projection. Uh, most teachers don't. It's a little bit fairly complicated. But you're, if your teacher asks you to do that, the book does go through a nice step process on how to um, flip down your linear structure to get the uh, cyclic structure. And you can work yourself uh, through that. Thank you.